and uh, I'm live. There we go. Been a little while since I've done this. I think everything is in place. I'll wait for a couple minutes because I imagine some people will pop in before I get through, um, kind of go through what is coming up. Hello, Aurora. Lovely to see you again. It's been a little while since I've streamed. Hope you're doing well. Hope you've had a good month or so since the last one of these. Playtest, welcome. Uh, Playtest Philip Briggs' channel is OG David, as opposed to Lodimus, which is David1. It's been so long I've forgotten which one of you is which, I apologize. Uh, Kyle, welcome. Thanks for popping in. Dudley, hello. Um, I am just going to go over the uh, upcoming playtest releases for um, spring and summer of 2024. We've got several different projects we're working on, one of which is both D&D and uh, Mythcraft, all of which are at least just Mythcraft. Oh, okay, David won. My apologies. Um, and uh, let's see. So uh, first things first, there, there have been a couple changes to our release schedule just because I bit off a little bit more than I could chew in terms of time frame. So all of the content that we uh, like that we've advertised that we've committed to it's still coming out i've just slowed the roll just a little bit um because i've got a great writing team but uh even with all of them like firing on all cylinders we just can't quite keep up with with what i originally predicted um that said yes a wild nathan in his natural habitat welcome justin thank you for joining um here we go so nope still can't do that here we go. <laughs> um, so what we've already got released, this is all out and uh, ready. You can find it on the uh, uh, wiki. We've got like a little play test section specifically for the wiki. We've got Ant and Sarah before the first super eon, and that's all um, all dinosaur, kaijin, uh, ancient culture, like l minimal magic campaign setting. Uh, it is not a campaign itself, but it's a setting for our first Super Eon exploring um, Ansara. Uh, so it's got like a different super continent that you can explore. There's a lot of a lot of lore where you can run your own uh, campaigns, fighting <laughs> fighting all of the big stompies. Um, now there's also Kings of Tyranny, which is a specific campaign set in the first Super Eon. Um, so part one of that is already out and playable, um, and uh, part one is really, really fun. I had a great time writing it and uh, had a lot of help putting together a really special city-state for people to explore. Um, and then the Cloven Lands part two, Cloven Lands and Kings of Tyranny are both going to be three-part um, campaigns, and so Cloven Lands part one and two are out and ready to play. And that's our more like typical high magic fantasy uh setting camp or fantasy campaign it's not a setting it's in it's in our setting um and uh, the uh, cloven lands i would uh, i call it kind of like a game of thrones ish adventure it's got like the house politics dynamic the heroes have to choose uh which which noble houses they want to back uh what agendas they want to help promote over the course of the game so um Part one, parts one and two of the Cloven Lands will take you up to level um, ten ish, and then part three, which is coming out a little bit later, will uh, um, will bring you out, uh, bring you up to level fifteen. Uh, again, all of this is Mythcraft, unless I specify otherwise, uh, because some of it is going to be both Mythcraft and D and D. The majority is just Mythcraft. Um, so that's what we've got out already. Moving into what's coming up later this month, we've got uh, Harker's Guide to Vampire Hunting, Part 1. So Harker's Guide to Vampire Hunting is one of the three um, one of the three books that we are working on writing for Veil of the Eternal Night, our Kickstarter that we ran this past February. Uh, Harker's Guide is the player-facing book, so it's got... Um, once, once all of Harker's Guide is complete... It's going to have all of the new player options. It's going to have the legacy artifacts that level up with you as you go on your adventures. It will have a bestiary, 
that's all of the generic monsters that aren't like boss monsters like dracula himself is not going to be in harker's guide but uh werewolves for example will be in harker's guide um werewolves both as like monster stats that the that the myth crafter or the dungeon master can take and like and run and fight the heroes with uh there is also a werewolf class that the uh, uh that the heroes can play now um so anything Veil vale of the Eternal Night related is both Mythcraft and D&D. So Harker's Guide to Vampire Hunting Part 1 is going to include roughly a third of our total book for both, um, for both systems, for both Mythcraft and D&D. So we're, we're well on track for that. That deadline, um, I'm proud to say, didn't, didn't shift at all. So we've still got all of the subclasses or class tracks coming out on April 12th, which is... Um, second that's not this friday but next friday so coming out really soon um yeah so the legacy items um i probably three of them will be out with the uh, with part one but most of the legacy items will not be released until a later like edition of uh, harker's guide so Harker's Guide Part 1 is going to have all of the lineage options. It's going to have all of the subclass options. Do not hear all the class options. Hear all the subclass options. So we don't yet have uh, the Vampire class, the Werewolf class, or the Hellcrafter class. We will have those at a later point for playtesting. We're just not quite ready to, to release those. Um, so all of the subclasses, all of the lineages or races, um, and... Uh, between a quarter and a third of all of the monsters, magic options, and um, magic items separate from legacy items, like the smaller, like typical magic items that you might find. Um, so that's Harker's Guide Part 1. That's coming out in just, I can't do, oh, actually I can do math, in 10 days, <laughs> coming out in 10 days. So look forward to that. I'm I'm so excited about these um, subclasses. I've been working on them all weekend, uh, all the past couple days, and uh, the branded berserker or barbarian is complete. The sleuth rogue is complete. The uh, penitent monk or penitent pugilist. I just finished for the mythcraft system uh, just before doing this stream. Uh, so I'll be doing that for the D and D system later tonight. Um, Circle of Tarot is done. So I'm. Uh, and, you know, my uh, writers are working on uh, their own uh, uh, cl subclass and lineage work as well. So really, really excited to share all of that with you. Um, actually, before I, before I move on from that, um, the Curse Blade is one of the uh, fighter or warrior subclasses that we're introducing. And in uh, February, when we were running our Kickstarter, there was a lot of interest in this uh, subclass. I was doing some design streams, and a lot of people wanted to see me design the uh, Curse Blade live. Um, I I'm not actually writing the Curse Blade, but one of my writers, an awesome guy named uh, Gregory, who is also a published novelist. Um, I can't remember the name of his novel right now, but if you look up uh, Gregory Wonderland novel, you'll find it, and it's like fantasy sci-fi genre. Um, I've been meaning to pick up a copy. I just haven't yet. Uh, anyway, he he's doing the uh, the Curse Blade uh, uh, fighter, and he has agreed to do a stream with me this coming Monday evening at six p.m. Eastern. So uh, there is a live stream link set up, so you can uh, click so that it'll like notify you when we're going live. Um, if you're in Discord, we've got an event set up for that as well. So, uh, yeah, we'll be doing another design stream as uh, Gregory and I sit down and talk through the, um, the Curse Blade. Now, on from Harker's Guide for now, we've got Clovenlands Part 3, which again will take you from levels 10 or 11 up through 15, and will be the conclusion to the Clovenlands campaign. Uh, that has been delayed from, uh, uh, I can't remember its original date, I think it was the 15th or 17th to uh, the 19th. So there's like a whole week now between some of these releases instead of like super weeks where a whole bunch of stuff comes out in one week. Um, so I've I've delayed these timelines a little bit uh, just to give me and the writers some turn some turnaround time. Uh, so we've got uh, 
the the conclusion to the Cloven Lands coming out on April nineteenth, and the beginning of Soliloquy of Annihilation coming out now on April twenty sixth. So that is going to be. I want to say levels one through three in Mythcraft or one through two in uh, um, in D anD. d Again, Soliloquy of Annihilation is part of our. Um, Veil of the Eternal Night trilogy, so it is available in both systems, or it will be available in both systems. Um, yeah, so super excited for that. I've written the uh, like prologue part of it, so I haven't gotten to where the characters level up from level one yet, but it's a really, really fun like introduction to what the story is all about. Um, moving forward, let's see here. We've got... In mid-May, we're going to release part two of Harker's Guide to Vampire Hunting. That should include most of the rest of the player options for Harker's Guide. It will include all of the full new classes. So Vampire and Werewolf in both systems and Hellcrafter in the Mythcraft exclusive system. Um, It will include more of the legacy artifacts. So uh, Kyle, I'm sure, will be excited for that. Um, and uh, probably another third or another quarter of our magic options are magic items, mundane items, and, uh, like, bestiary. And then, uh, um, popping down to to June real quick, um, mid-June, about a month after, after the Part 2 release, Part 3 of Harker's is going to be the full book. So it'll have the rest of the magic, the rest of the monsters, It'll have updated uh, subclasses and class options based on any like broken things that we find and patch between between May and June. Um, so that's that's May and that's Harker's Guide. Uh, also in May, a week after that, we'll have um, part two of Kings of Tyranny. This is where I was originally like significantly too ambitious with with our turnaround time. I anticipated incorrectly having uh, all of Kings of Tyranny done by the end of April. That's that's just not happening. Um, so part two of Kings of Tyranny, which goes from levels four through ten-ish, will be um, released in uh, May 20th. And again, that's the uh, ancient Superion, Superion 1. So it's uh, it details the events of the Dinosaur Wars, which my elevator pitch on that is imagine the Babylonians versus the Assyrians but fantasy, and if they both had dinosaur armies. That's that's what we're dealing with. Um, so part two will roll out in uh, uh, the end of May. And then, yeah, I'm, I, I'm having such a fun time writing Kings of Tyranny. I just can't, I you know, I, I want to give it the time it deserves. And between all of the other things going on, I just can't roll it out uh, this month. Um, beginning of June, we've got the rest of Soliloquy of Annihilation. Um, that's another one that's a little bit ambitious, and so we might end up stretching it a little bit and do, like, a part two, part three scenario with Soliloquy as well. But the plan is to get all of Soliloquy of Annihilation out by June, uh, by the beginning of June, and that's going to be levels one through 15. Um, again, this one is part of Veil of the Eternal Night, so it's both, um, D&D and Mythcraft. Soliloquy of Annihilation details the heroes in their fight against Dracula. Um, moving into July, the um, I get Kings of Tyranny Part Three will come out early July. Um, that'll be that'll take you up to level fifteen. Kings of Tyranny and Cloven Lands and Soliloquy of Annihilation are all levels one through fifteen campaigns in Mythcraft. Um, Soliloquy of Annihilation is 1 through 10 in D&D. It's beginning of the adventure to about halfway as powerful as your her- as your character can get. Um, at some point, I would love to write a Kings of Tyranny sequel, but there are no definite plans for that at this time. Um, and finally, the last thing on our schedule right now is the full Daughter of the Shadows campaign which will be released mid-July, and uh, that will be both D&D and uh, Mythcraft. It's the third book in our um, Veil of the Eternal Night trilogy. 
and it deals with Dracula's daughter and with the ramifications of everything that happens in Soliloquy of Annihilation. So uh, Daughter of the Shadows will go from level 16 through 30. It'll be our first high-level Mythcraft adventure. It'll be our first high-level Mythcraft and D&D adventure that we write as um, quasi-real publishing house. So super excited for that too. Grant and I have talked a lot about broad strokes with all of the different plot elements that are going on there so um lots of uh, really exciting things there and um we are still on track to uh, announce a new project sometime in late june or in july um lots of really cool ideas there we're not quite sure what um what it's going to be we've got several different ideas and we haven't we haven't narrowed it down to exactly one but whatever it is it's going to be really exciting um I, I won't say more about that now, but if you have any questions about something besides the next project to be announced, I would love to uh, talk through any of it for the next few minutes. Um, are the raptors going to have feathers? I, I used to be, so as a little kid, I loved dinosaurs. I wanted to be a paleontologist when I grew up. Um, and uh, in all of my dinosaur books I had at the time, dinosaurs had scales. And so when paleontologists said, you know, it's possible that dinosaurs actually had feathers, I was just, like, third or fourth grade Nathan was just furious. I was like, no, they don't. They're reptiles. They don't have feathers. Now I don't really care. I think they look cool either way. Um, I did not make it canon one way or another in uh, Anne Sarah's official history. So you could say some of them did and some of them didn't. You could say none of them did. You could say all of them did. That's that's creativity that begins with like uh, me and with the writing team and ends with you as the myth crafter to make your own decision in your own uh, like canon of Anne Sarah. You know, when it comes to lore, I appreciate being compared to uh, uh, Tolkien. I uh, I take that as a compliment. If you said that about, like, a novel I wrote, I might go, ooh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go that in-depth. Like, I want I want the plot to happen. But when it's a source book, I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, arc dinos for sure. That's, that's a thing in um, Kings of Tyranny. Uh, there are... Uh, there are options for, like, dinosaur barding, that kind of stuff. Spiked armor, um, gold-tipped triceratops horns, that kind of stuff. Especially once the war really gets going. Because part one is kind of, like, setting up the dominoes so that they fall in parts two and three. Um, but yeah, there will be those kinds of options. In the Soliloquy of Annihilation teaser, how much lore and setting info is there going to be? Um, I'm I'm thinking through what I've written and what 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 I'll say is it's kind of a uh, like an origin story. It's like a uh, prologue to uh, the rest of the the story that you. Uh, play through in Soliloquy of Annihilation. So uh, you meet the quest giver that becomes like one of the most prominent quest givers throughout the entire campaign. Uh, this quest giver is very judicious in the lore that they disclose um, for specific like reasons. They, they are curious what the heroes can do with a... Uh, um, with incomplete information. They're curious to see what the heroes are made of and how the heroes handle themselves. So they tell the heroes exactly what the heroes need to know in order to go and do, like, this first quest. Um, toward the end of it, uh, toward the end of, like, the, the teaser, then the quest giver will come and say, okay, here's what's really going on. Here's what I really need your help with. And that'll get into some of what is going on in the larger, like, region of Norspina, what's going on with... Dracula and uh, Dracula's, like, empire. Um, so uh, you'll get, you should get broad strokes of uh, 
the entire like first 15 levels of Mythcraft, first 10 levels of D&D. Um, broad strokes of what the setting looks like and what's going on. You will also get more specific information on uh, how vampirism works in our setting. That's that's very relevant to the uh, prologue or to the teaser. So some some really specific stuff and uh, quite a bit of like broad strokes, but um, there's not going to be like you know specific write-ups of all of the different major cities that you're going to go and visit. That's something that'll roll out in in future in like the whole. Um, the whole complete release of uh, Soliloquy of Annihilation at the beginning of June. Um, anticipate sharing material as it's created with backers like we did with the original Mythcraft campaign. Uh, that's that's more or less what this uh, timeline is, um, Evan. So the... Uh, uh, playtesting for Soliloquy of Annihilation is going to be like all of this information that goes to the backers and to our playtesters um, prior to it being like published and officiated and finalized. So that's that's basically what this what this timeline demonstrates. Um, uh, yes, yes, definitely enough lore to make PCs to make characters that you feel tie directly in with the uh, campaign. Um, yeah, Aurora. So the uh, part of part of the prologue is explaining how and why your character is invested in what's going on. Part of the prologue, uh, I'll, I'm I'm comfortable disclosing this. Part of the prologue is explaining how and why each of the different heroes have the legacy items that they do at the beginning of the game. So you um, start Soliloquy of Annihilation with your own legacy item. Um, at least at this point, again, subject to finalization, but that's the that's the direction I'm going with it, and that's part of what the like teaser will reveal. Um, there was another question in there. Is Dracula around during Superion One? I am uh, going to uh, not answer that until the uh, until at least the teaser, just to let the let the mystique go out there a little bit. I guess that means I should make sure that there's like five or six legacy items that are done by the time the teaser is ready, huh? Instead of releasing the ball in part two. I can do that. Five or six. I can do like half of the legacy items. Or 50. I think there's 14 total legacy items, if I am recalling correctly. I don't have my list up right now, but actually, you know what? I can just, I can pull it up real quick and confirm that. I'll stay on for another five minutes or so if anyone has more questions. Um, I, uh, I'm an introvert, so I was unsurprisingly a little bit live streamed out after the month of February, but I'm going to try to get back into the rhythm of doing this maybe once every two or three weeks moving forward. So I'll I'll be around and available for this kind of uh, Q&A more frequently. That's true, Aurora. That could be a really easy way to do it. First couple features that you can get at level one. David one, I appreciate that. I just I don't have the uh, um, what's the word? What I'm trying to think of a word besides just like extroversion. I don't have the extroversion to to continually do that. Um, maybe one day I can get into the rhythm of like a social battery. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, maybe one day I can get into the rhythm of like a once a week thing, but definitely not what I did this past February. Um, Radine's ancestors. Radine's ancestors predate the Kings of Tyranny, so no, they're they're not really a big part of that. Uh, although some of the like technology from the um, from the Avadri, the ancestors to the Radine and to the Remnants, uh, some of that technology is around on uh, Ansara during the um, during the events of Kings of Tyranny, and that's part of how 
heroes can actually like fight back against dinosaurs is because they can arm themselves with these like magic items that level the playing field a little bit. Spaz, thanks for joining. No worries uh, sliding in late. Here's the updated uh, development timeline. Um, the uh, latest release has not been altered, and the earliest release in uh, April has not been altered. The stuff in the middle has shifted a little bit. It's uh, moved from being pretty front-loaded in April to being more of kind of an even spread. Um, but that's that's basically what we're looking at. Um, the other thing I was looking at was how many... Where is it? Legacy artifacts there are. Yeah, 14. So at least a handful of those will be available by the 26th of this month. Um, well, if you have any other questions, feel free to uh, pop them in chat, and I'll take a couple more. Uh, otherwise, I hope you're all having a great start to your week, start to your April. I thought about doing this stream yesterday and putting something just ridiculous in the timeline, um, just to see who called me on. Like, Mythcraft 2e coming out soon, just to see who would like panic and who would be like, oh, it's April Fool's. Um, Dino lineages, not in Kings of Tyranny, Justin, but in Ansara before, the first Superion, there are dinosaur lineages. They're called the Kosovran, and those are out and uh, currently in playtesting right now. I've made a couple tweaks to them as people have uh, given um, some feedback on it, so the most updated version is on the wiki. Give me just a second and I'll actually drop a link to them in chat. Yeah, there we go. We don't have art for them yet or anything. It's just like article format, but uh, that's that's what we've got for them. Um, the occultism mage, can I give a teaser about what it will be about? Sure, I'll give a teaser. Um, aesthetically, think about the, uh, uh, I think they're just called the occultist from Darkest Dungeon. Uh, with like the weird reconstruction where it heals you, but it has the chance of in like inflicting a bleeding condition on you or something like that. Um, that's like the aesthetic that we're going for, although leaning a little bit away from uh, like the eldritch element and more into the gothic horror element. So making pacts with like um, a devil or a fiend of some kind instead of like a tentacle Cthulhu type monster. Um, that's the vibe. I have not drafted the mechanics yet, but let me see if I can give just a little bit of a, a teaser on that. Uh, yeah, okay, so let's see, I don't want to give too much away until next Friday, but they can, um, they'll, they'll have this, like, central mechanic where they can take a creature that they have defeated in battle and sacrifice it to their fiend like lord in order to gain like certain specific benefits almost like flavor wise lore wise take like the concept of the warlock patron specifically like pact of the fiend warlock patron and just dial it up to 11 in terms of like how active the patron is and what what it's like uh, granting you and what it's demanding of you. That's kind of what we're looking at with the occultism mage. Uh, I'll give a couple other like teasers. The sleuth rogue. Let me let me back up and give like a a backstory. Um, if you have uh, listened to Power Word Fail or Mythcraft the podcast, you have seen me exclusively play. Um, uh, casting classes. I do like a nice marshal. I usually gravitate toward casting or toward half casting, but I like a uh, fighter or a monk in 5th edition. In Mythcraft, I really like the pugilist, the uh, warrior, the ranger, but I tend to stay kind of in the middle with uh, my marshal characters. I'll go all over the place with... <laughs> I love Hildegard so much. Um... She is scary. 
she's a scary girl. Um, I, uh, I tend to go all over the place in terms of what kind of casting I'll do, but when I'm doing Marshall, I'm usually kind of the middle of the line, like, got some constitution, got some evasion, got some, like, hard-hitting, like, tactical, kind of a tactical character. Um, your, your Aragorn trope, your Legolas trope, even, or, like, like, Matt Murdock, Captain America, um, Daredevil, like, Matt, Matt, I know Matt Murdock is Dare, Daredevil. Um, Daredevil, Captain America. Like I tend to be kind of in the middle on that spectrum with martial characters. I tend not to lean into like the Hulk style characters or um, the Black Widow style characters. So I don't. I almost never play rogues. I almost never play barbarians. Uh, the two classes that I have recently worked on make me want to play both a barbarian and a rogue. The Barbarian is the Branded. Um, I believe you've all seen uh, art for the Branded. Uh, it's the one that has like the flashing like Zuko fire eye thing going on. Um, and uh, it is just an awesome, awesome like uh, Berserker Barbarian concept. With both the Sleuth and the Branded, um, Grant... Uh, <laughs> Grant and I, like, talked back and forth, uh, about, like, concept ideation, um, he came up with some, like, mechanical ideas, I came up with some mechanical ideas, we passed them back and forth, and then I sat down and, and wrote it. Uh, that's been the past couple days. So, the Branded has this ability where, um, let me see, let me pull it up without sharing my screen real quick and actually see which... Which abilities to share? Um, apologies for the dead airspace. Give me a second here. Here we go. The uh, branded has obviously. Okay, okay, that's a fun one to share. The. The Branded has an ability where when it is attacking with Fury, it gets the Fury ability. Uh, I'm talking purely in Mythcraft terms right now because, um, I don't know, I write Mythcraft. Um, it's it's really fun in D&D as well. I would play it in D&D as well. But in, in Mythcraft, it gets the Fury ability just like the Rage track of the uh, Berserker. When, um, when it is attacking with Fury it can increase its crit range, but if it does so, it has a chance of accidentally summoning a shade that attacks its allies. <laughs> um, it's got a range of like negative effects that could happen. On, um, on the lower end of the... like if, if things go really badly, then a shade appears and starts attacking its allies. If things go perfectly, then nothing bad happens. If things go kind of badly, then uh, it's crit range still increases for its fury attack but um it also gains fear as its brand uh, bursts into light and sears its psyche so that's one of the things the branded can do um one more i'll say is it can use its brand to magically augment one of its weapons turning it into like a cloud strife style just like over the top enormous weapon and that has some like fun mechanical benefits um that is a uh, branded teaser. Uh, the sleuth, its entire like core concept. It's it's almost a linear track. It's got a couple splits, but I realized like in our core rogue class in Mythcraft, all of the all of the classes are, um, or all of the all of the tracks in the rogue are like menu tracks, and so I thought let's let's try to make the sleuth more like closer to a linear track, and so the whole thing like you get this ability and you develop it over the course of the uh, your progression down the track, uh, you get an ability to collect evidence by making different kinds of skill checks, and then when you fight a creature, you can spend your evidence to gain different kinds of like abilities, gain tactical advantage, deal additional sneak attack. Um, and, uh, uh, what else? You can spend evidence to learn certain parts of the enemy's stat block. So you can learn, like, 
what traits they have, what immunities or vulnerabilities they have, what um, what their like attribute scores are, that kind of stuff. So that's the that's the sleuth. Um, it obviously has plenty of out of combat stuff it can do as well. I mean, it's like the Inquisitive. It's really applicable in a combat. Um, but we also tried to really lean into like the Sherlock um, mystique, the aesthetic of someone like developing a network of informants, um, being able to communicate in kind of a almost like a thieves can't shorthand with um, with other like law enforcement individuals or like tavern bouncers, authority like private security figures. Um, so that's kind of what we've got going on with the with the sleuth. Um, let's see, there was one other. Gravedigger, Gravedigger, Monk, Gravedigger, Pugilist. Um, I, uh, uh, I am not writing that one myself. One of, one of my writers is doing that. Um, Anna is in, uh, Discord, uh, occasionally, like, commenting, engaging in uh, chat. So, uh, they are responsible for the Gravedigger. From, from what I've seen, I will say... It's also gonna be really fun. Like I, I already like monks. I like pugilists. Um, but I would definitely play a grave digger. It's more of like, so it's it's more like a fifth edition monk, off the bat, than a, um, than a, a mythcraft pugilist because the pugilist doesn't have the like spiritual, um, vibe, uh, necessarily like baked into it the way the monk does. The monk is already a very like spiritually based class um and so the grave digger is all about like making sure that creatures that have died stay dead and pass into the afterlife seamlessly so it's all about like preventing undead from ever becoming undead in the first place consecrating burial grounds so that they can't rise up again that kind of thing um i mean it's also got like the I don't play League of Legends, but I believe Yorick is the character. Let me confirm. Yeah, yeah. So it's got like the big like grave dig grave digging shovel, like a uh, like like the Kinsei monk in Fifth Edition can have a special weapon. It's it's that kind of like aesthetic. Um, I don't want to say more about the grave digger because I haven't reviewed all of the different mechanics yet. But that's like kind of the the aesthetic that's that's going on with it. Um. All right, well, uh, we've been going for about 40 minutes already, which shocks me. It feels like it's been 10. I love talking about this, hanging out with all of you. So um, I will be back on Monday along with Gregory to design the Curse Blade with all of you. Um, and uh, I look forward to seeing you all then. Hope you have a great rest of your week. Playtest is in chat. Um, check out Playtest's channel playtest till it breaks also on youtube they are alive i believe every other friday uh it's been a couple weeks since i've been able to tune in but definitely go give them a uh, a view uh, a listen and uh support them as well all right thanks so much everyone i'll talk to you all later